It's KBKW's Coffee Talk. 837 is the time, and we have Aria with us. Am I saying your name right? That's or right. Or is it Aria? Aria. Aria, yes. okay. And and so explain why why you're here. Well, I'm here because I'm the writer director of the Grayport film, which is an independent film that's been shooting here in Grace Harbor for the past few years, and we are casting a actress to join us in the finale of the film. We've gotten to the finale, and we are looking for one special lady to join our cast. Looking for someone between the ages of, uh, I'd say, 20 to 35, mm-hmm. but got a pass for earlier in her 20s. You know, some people look younger and under so five. So why not five. get somebody that is that young? You, you know, it's from 20 oh, years okay. to oh, okay. 35 gotcha, in gotcha. case they look a little younger. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and under five foot five, uh, so that she's not towering over the co-star. <laughs> and uh, that's bad, huh? That, that that doesn't look so good when you're the love interest. So we have that in there. Some people have emailed me going, "Well, I, you know, why can't I be five foot six? Well, there's a reason. And then once you we put you in stiletto heels, that might just be a whole big mess. <laughs> so we want a more of a more of a petite lady. And, yeah, someone who's available to shoot, I'd say, through the end of the summer, maybe once a week. And we're excited to have to have uh, an undiscovered talent that we so will discover. So what is the so what's the storyline here? So we, we got... it's a crime thriller. Oh, yeah, it's a crime thriller, um, sort of set in this area, but under the fictional guise of a town named Grayport. So it's a little mm-hmm. bit like Aberdeen and Hoquiam in a noir alternate reality. So, so this person is, is in the finale. So, so, uh, and and not in the rest of the story. So, w- why is this person sh- showing so, up at this this late time in the film? Well, she is hinted at throughout the rest of the film, where she she sort of you know is in the background, or they might talk about her uh-huh. or see her briefly because she's the mysterious woman, the mysterious femme fatale that that has some of the secrets they've been looking for. She's somehow connected to the mayor who was murdered, and they're not sure how. And, and they suspect that she was the mayor's young mistress oh. that he was hiding. Oh, wow. This is yeah. A, yeah. It's, it's a very complicated, you know, twists and turns in this, in this thriller. And so at the finale of the film, she actually is revealed as a fully fleshed out character that has scenes and talks and tells her story and, and joins in the plot in a full way. So obviously you're looking for somebody that's got some acting chops then. Well, you don't have to have experience. You can be um, just sometimes the right personality, and then I will direct that person. Because we've had people who are just naturals who've never acted on camera before. And uh, to be honest, sometimes that's better. Because if a person has done a lot of theater, for example, they have to relearn everything because film is so different. And if you haven't had an acting background and you get in front of a camera and you're just playing it straight the way you would talk to your friend, the way you'd be in mm-hmm. real life, it works much better than if you've taken classes on, you know, acting. Okay. Well, yeah, cause, because I, if you're on stage, you kind of have to overdo everything. You do. You so have to project to the from, back row. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so for something where we're trying to have it be grounded and, and naturalistic in this crime thriller, thriller it's uh, better that people don't have preconceived notions of how they should be on camera and just follow direction and just be willing to. And know, so, when it learn. comes to doing your lines, or you just do it in segments, you don't have to memorize everything. Yeah, there's or... no. Yeah, okay. the theater actors who've uh, you know did, did many many plays. That was kind of a relief to them, as they would think they'd have to learn all of this and go. No, you know, you just need these two lines, and then we say cut, and then you read your script again, and you know, get to the next two lines. Huh. So it's it's actually much easier than theater in some ways. But you know, I have seen some movies where you can tell like they're in a town and they're using the people that live there. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and usually some old old fella or you know just just people in general. And a lot of them, uh, because of the, because they're so natural looking, because you know they're just regular people, that projects well on the screen. It does, it does, and there have been feature films made uh, on purpose with non actors, where every single person in the film was just somebody they found in that town, mm-hmm. and the director gave them their lines, and um, you know, kind of an, as an experimental thing. But I think it can work really well, and we've had a blend. We've had some people who never did any kind of acting and they just had this incredible personality that fit their character 
and it worked beautifully. And we've had people who spent their whole life in theater and adapted to film with, you know, we did work on it, we did exercises, and then once they adapted to the film medium, they were just brilliant. So we've had both sides, people who had a lot of experience acting, people who had no experience but, you know, you don't know, I like, I don't want to limit it because when the right person comes in, I think we'll know it. Okay. So. Now what is, so how much of, of the plot can you tell us without mm. give, giving too much information? Yeah. Well, it's like I said, it, we start off in this uh, weather beaten um, gray town called Grayport. And then we find out that there have been a series of horrific murders that the police cannot solve. And then we find this uh, retired, uh, penniless, worn-out investigative reporter who seems to think that it's connected to a billionaire who came into town a few months back, and everything's been happening after he moved to town. But we don't really know. We don't really know if the reporter is completely nuts and just dislikes the guy or if there really is some vast criminal enterprise behind this guy and his success. Now, this now you've been uh, working on this for four years. So how long have you been filming? Um, well, you know, I'm not positive. I think it's been about three years on and off oh, when okay. people were available. Because we, we finished our Kickstarter uh, at the very beginning of 2014. But then we were in pre-production for a couple of years, basically, just kind of lining things up and, and working on the, on the screenplay. And then we started shooting slowly and got going. So I would say, you know, it's been five years. Probably wow. three of it have been have been like shooting, and two of it has been pre. So you don't have big studio money to to get yeah, things. Yeah, when you don't have a big budget to just do it all at once, it's uh, you do it when you can with volunteers. So now, where, where did where did where did you get your background? Well, let's see. I mean, I started all the way back in high school because um, I was lucky enough to have a video production class mm -hmm. in my high school. That was a couple hours a day, every day, and it just um, got to feel natural to use the equipment and to edit and to learn how that all worked. Um, and then after school, I volunteered on a lot of independent film sets in Seattle. Okay, because I was going to say, because yeah. obviously you got the background, and I was just curious how you, how you. Well, you I, got I appreciate it. that, and uh, I, this is my first feature, though. So it's mm. been it's been a journey of a lot of growth and a lot of learning, uh, being hands on, because in Seattle you would have one job, you'd learn how to do your one thing, mm -hmm. and you'd have a crew that you know you distributed the work. And here, um, there's not the same base of people with that skill who went to film school or went to art school or whatever. And so I had to learn for the first time to be behind the camera. I've never done that before. So it's been, a, it's been quite an experience. Now, when, when this is completed, where does the film go from there? I mean, how, how, do you, how do you get it out to the public? Well, it would go to, I mean, I, I guess we should say that we'll start with a local premiere because it would just be terrible sure. to not have yeah. that. But then beyond that, um, we would go on a film festival circuit like most indie okay. films do. Okay. And so you, you take it around and you go you try to make the best festivals you can and talk to distributors and, and see what, what happens next. Yeah, what, what's interesting, and I'm, you're probably aware of this, in Astoria, they've had some major films shot yeah. there. Yeah, Astoria has a very proud film culture. Oh, yeah, and, and my, my daughter got to know... Because uh, because Sean it was in Goonies and and Sean I'm trying to remember his last name he played one of the characters anyway his dad used to play uh, in in um, the where they had and the Adams family oh and and that's he great. and he played the father mm -hmm. anyway so so they set up production or to feed you know, to feed everybody in the crew at the school mm -hmm. and so Sean Aston. Uh, uh, Sean Aston's uh, father, John Aston, kind of became a, a friend to my daughter oh, that's because cool. because you know he was there when they were eating and so on and so forth. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger made a movie there, but he was not very kind <laughs> to oh, the kids. No. And then uh, and then they had uh, Short Circuit. Well, you know it's funny because in the Seattle world, uh, in the Seattle indie sort of fishbowl, I always made fun of the fact that. In any direction you went, you had more of a film industry than in Seattle. Like, we were kind of the desert, because if you went north to Vancouver, B.C., they have a huge... It was cheaper up there. It was huge film industry sure. over there. They have a lot of, actually, independent uh, production companies in Spokane, which people don't know about, but it's pretty cheap to shoot there, so I think they set up. And then there's there were TV shows and other things happening in Portland. So at the time that I was in Seattle, there were several TV shows 
constantly shooting episodes in Portland. So you could get paying work, you know, going south, going east, going north. Um, yeah, going west, you'd be in the middle of the ocean, but that's about the only direction you could go mm. where you would have less film. Well, we have another <laughs> caller on the line. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, you are awesome. And it's been fun watching the, the updates with the different Facebook posts. Are you and, talking and... to me? Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It was, it was fun meeting you at the potlatch a couple of years ago, too, but watching your posts on the, the film. Um, and it's neat that, that there's a lot of positive cinema, cinematic and television series. There's the series Siren that uh, mentioned Aberdeen um, that is going on that's, uh, that's neat. Uh, but um, Grayport, the mm -hmm. name Grayport, and I'm curious if it's actually that fictitious because locally mm, there's yeah. local, there's a Grayport transfer and storage. Um, wonderful uh, uh, couple run that uh, local um, but when I was talking to her about your film, uh, she she met, she led me to believe there was more to it. So I don't know if there's actual history there um, well, in I'll that suspense. I'll, I'll, or... Yeah, I'll tell you. So it actually happened that in the beginning I had to come up with a name for this town to differentiate it from it's the real a great town. Name. It's a great name. Yeah, and but... it was just I thought of it, but I think what happens is a lot of people had the same emotional connection to the area when they live here. Mm -hmm. They think about the color gray, and they think mm -hmm. about it being a port town and a harbor right. harbor town. And so, you know, we have Westport, we have Gray's Harbor, we have Gray Land. So we have similar names. And right. it wasn't surprising to me, although I found out later, after the film was named, that there were businesses and a hotel and other things that had wow, that I name. Didn't know the hotel. Yeah, there was a Grayport Hotel in Hoquiam and it was actually a Neat. beautiful building that um Neat. you know, unfortunately isn't isn't here with us anymore. But it was there's been there's postcards of it. That you can hey, find. John, I gotta let you go because we're past our break time. Hey, I, I took my time. Thank you, bro. Bye. Bye, bye. Let's uh, take this break and then we'll be right back. It's KBKW's Coffee Talk. It is 6, make it 8, 855. I'm having trouble telling time today. Uh, but anyway, uh, and we have uh, Aria with us. And um, now how, how, let's see, how much longer do you think you need to to finish it now? To well, you know, I've, I've learned to be very careful making, making time uh. predictions because it has taken us a, a number of years. And when you have volunteers... And not you can't lock people down because you're not paying them to a schedule. So you do what you can, and you prep each scene individually. Uh, so you have to find the location or build the set or do whatever you're going to need to do. So I, I don't like to predict. I mean, I have my own, you know, sort of benchmarks. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're, what I can say is that we're at the finale. Uh, we have over 120 scenes in the screenplay, which is an, an enormously ambitious but over 100 of them have been filmed. Oh, so okay, so you've the, got the majority of it Yeah, finished. I see the light at the end of the tunnel, at least. <laughs> we have another caller. Hi, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was just, I wanted to ask you a question. If uh, When you're done with this movie, if you had ever thought about making a movie about John Torno, uh, I read, I read uh, Bill Lindstrom's book. He's the second and, uh, most requested. The the number one most requested is Billy Cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th I think it would be a a, a really you know kind of like a thriller murder thing, uh, chasing a guy out and around in the yeah, woods. Yeah, I agree with you. And it, and from a production standpoint, it would actually be a relief because the whole thing takes place in the woods and maybe a few scenes at the sheriff's office. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to go out in the woods. And shoot it and like film a guy hiding out. Well, I, I sure hope that uh, that you'd uh, uh, take that into consideration. I'll think about it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah, they've had some notorious people uh, that, that have been in this amazing uh, area. history here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so the Billy Ghoul thing, and yeah, I mean, just reading about the history of Turnow and Billy Ghoul and the Laura Law murders. Uh, actually, when when we started talking about doing a, a murder or a crime thriller 
we heard every murder story that's ever happened, you know, in the harbor. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how safe I feel anymore hearing all these stories, but know all the history. Well, yeah, it's, you know, this was a wild town. It back was. In its, in its it was. Days. It was amazing. It would actually be really incredible to do something that was 1920s Aberdeen Hoquiam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'd be wild. How do people get in touch with you if they want to do this? Yes, absolutely. So uh, any interested ladies, 20 to 35, um, go ahead and send your photo to grayportfilm at gmail.com. That's G-R-A-Y-P-O-R-T-F-I-L-M at gmail.com. I'll have you write that down for me so when we get more calls, because we'll probably have people inquiring over okay. the next few days. Sure, no problem. And then we can... Uh, Take care of business for you. At Thank least. you so much. Maybe find you somebody. I appreciate it. Give us credit in the credits. I will. Oh, cool. Th- thank the radio station. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> yeah, especially if you find the person you're looking for. Well, thanks for being with us. You bet. It's uh, 9 o'clock and time for news from ABC.